Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Joe with Colab Garage. Today we're going to switch things up a little bit and do a little bit more of a product review. This is uh, a hot topic, especially in V10 world, uh, Huracans and R8s. Uh, they're pretty known for uh, catching on fire. Exactly what the problem was. What the fuck? And uh, we feel that it's essential if you're gonna modify this car and put twin turbos on it, that you also have a sufficient fire suppression system installed on the vehicle. And you know, we won't let a car leave our shop without that installed. There's too many instances where, uh, you know, an oil line for the turbocharger, drain line, a uh, fuel injector popping out, a DI injector popping out. I mean, there's too many opportunities back there and the engine bay with the hatch shut is extremely hot. So it's a recipe for a fire to start. And with it being behind you, it's kind of hard to, you don't even know that the, that the vehicle is in trouble. So we recommend a fire safety on all of our vehicles, especially this platform. So what we're gonna talk about today is our Lifeline 360 system that we use. It's, uh, I mean, not gonna lie, it's not the cheapest system out there, but when you're talking about protecting your investment, you've already got a substantial amount of money invested in the car, and then you have another lump of money invested in modifying that car. You know, a fire suppression system that costs $1,300 plus install is peanuts compared to what could happen if the car were to have a fire and you weren't able to put it out. Now, I will say, you know, fire suppression systems are not designed to save your car. They're designed to save you, but, if we engineer it right, we can give you a pretty good chance of saving your car as well. So with that, let's talk about the Lifeline 360 system that uses Novak and how we're going to install it. And then we'll show you out in the shop uh, how we're gonna install it on this Audi R8 V10 that we have here that's been twin turbocharged. So stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel. As you saw in the opening, we're talking about fire suppression. Uh, we're in the engine build room today. Uh, I think the last video you saw, we were in the fab room building a catch can. Uh, this is our climate controlled engine build facility that we use to do, uh, we're, we haven't done transmission in here yet, but we're trying to find a way to make all that work in this room as well. But we do all of our engine builds in here. It's climate controlled dust. You can see here in the background, we have some pretty nice tools to be able to uh, assemble engines in here. So, and it's Georgia in the middle of summer, so I'm gonna be in the climate control room. So let's talk about the Lifeline system. <clears throat> this is the bottle. It's three kilograms and it's electronically act activated. Now you can save yourself about $300 and go with a pull handle, but um, with the way these cars are, and you wanna kinda of conceal where that button is and not have this obvious hole in your dash where you have a pull cable, uh, it gives you a lot more flexibility as to how you can mount the system. And it's only an extra 300 bucks. And it allows you to put multiple points. So you can have one inside, one outside, two outside, one inside, you know, you can kinda of wire this up however you see fit. But for the size of this, this has, a ton of knockdown power. Now I'm not a fire suppression expert, but our vendor that we use, Discovery Parts, said this has about five times the knockdown power of Halon. And uh, Halon's been since outlawed because it basically sucks all the oxygen out of the room. This won't do that. And this is safe on all of your electronics, your interior, your leather, your carpets. So if this were to be set off by accident or intentionally, it's not gonna ruin all the electronics in the car. It's not gonna stain your leather seats, your carpet. You know, you can clean this up and uh, refill the bottle and use it again. So I know that's one of the biggest questions we got. You know, hey, well, if, I, if somebody accidentally pulls the handle or hits the, oh, what's that do? Hits the button? That's not gonna ruin anything. You're just gonna have to pay to refill this sucker, which isn't cheap. It's about $250 to refill, but considering the cost of everything, that's, that's uh, not that much. So this has about a runtime of a minute and 15 seconds with five nozzles, which was really impressive to me. You can go with a slightly smaller bottle, but let's be honest, this thing's pretty small already. This will fit behind the seat in the R8. 
it'll fit in the front. And if you wanted to, you could put it up in the rear quarter. Uh, we don't recommend that because you can't really check status of the bottle, it's not accessible. So we uh, recommend putting it either behind the seat, on the little ledge in these platforms or in the front. I mean, you could obviously put this just about anywhere in any other vehicle. But uh, today we're specifically talking about the V10 platform. It also comes with mounting brackets that you would mount the bottle. Um, pretty straightforward. Comes with this flexible plastic fire line. It's all push lock, which is pretty interesting. So. Comes with these little push lock fittings that you just you know insert the line like so and then you can release it by pulling it off also it comes with the five different nozzles two of them are this style which is a flat spray pattern and two of them are four sorry three of them are this style, which kind of has a, a greater spray pattern. So in this application, we're gonna put the two blue flat nozzles on the back where the turbochargers are to kind of extinguish any fire that could start as a result of the oil fire on either the transmission or the turbo system. And then we'll put two of these kind of spraying at the intake manifold where the fuel is. And up in the front, a lot of systems use like a surge tank or they're all uh, the flex fuel sensors and all that up there on the rear bulkhead. So we'll have two nozzles spraying on that. And then the fifth one will be on the driver's, you know, lower leg area, just to follow the recommendations for all fire safety. You wanna have one or two of these on the driver, the rest on the places where the fire starts or can continue to run. The other cool thing is it also comes with a bulkhead fitting. So on this, when we go to put it on the car, we're gonna put this bottle in the front, in the front next to the water tank for the intercoolers. And then we'll drill a small hole for the bulkhead in the bottom of there. And then we can pass the lines through to the back of the car. And then we use that T fitting and this block fitting to break off all the channels for the nozzles. And then lastly, we have the electronics box, which is a very simple box. It's battery powered. So the one thing you have to do is, you know, make sure that the nine volt battery in here is not discharged. So probably every time you check your, or change your oil, you should also check the battery to make sure it's sufficiently charged. And then you get two mil spec grade buttons with a little shield around it. And the way you wire this in, you plug one of these cables into the bottle. The other cable plugs into this box. And then in between those two cables, you wire the buttons. And the button basically just creates a ground to be able to activate the system. So this is independent of the car. It's not wired into the car. So you don't have to worry about if the car is shut off for whatever reason and the fire is running, that this, this system won't set off the system. And since it's just ground trigger, it just has to momentarily see that, that ground and it's gonna set off the trigger in the bottle to activate the, the system. So, oh, well, the last, they also supply some really nice heat sleeve, fiberglass heat sleeve, to be able to protect the line anywhere that you're gonna have to run it by where it's hot. So with that being said, let's go out to the shop. We can go and uh, install this on the R8 that's here in the shop and kind of show you guys how we go about installing one of these systems. And then we can link you below to uh, where we sell it on our website and uh, go from there. All right guys, we're out here in the shop. Got the R8 in the background. Jacob is working on getting the fire bottle and the electronics mounted in the front. So first things first, you have to remove all the plastics. We're not gonna show you how to do that. I'm sure you guys could figure that part on your own or use a factory service manual, but uh, we'll kind of walk you through where we're gonna place the bottle, where the pass through is gonna go and uh, how we're gonna pass the wiring in through to the cabin.
much later. All right, guys, we skipped ahead a little bit. Uh, the hole for the bulkhead is already done. You can see it tucked back in there. That's what passes the fire suppressant line from the bottle back to the engine bay. And then there's a secondary line that runs off the bottle that we found this grommet for the electrical system to pass through. And that's also where the electrical for the push buttons pass through. That's what this DTM4 connector is for that allows for the push button activation. And then just to give, give you an idea of how it's routed, you just want to route it kind of cleanly around, zip tied in a few spots, and then it loops down uh, behind the strut tower. And there is a rubber grommet that passes through to the interior that we'll show you on the other side. This is the underside of the frunk from where we have the interior cabin and wiring passing through. So that one up around the brake booster where we originally showed you, just kind of comes up around where the water lines are for the turbo kit. And then we just passed it through that rubber grommet right there and into the interior. All right. On the interior, it's a little more challenging. So the way we decided to put the activation button, because this is electronic, is on the steering column. We decided to put it here for a couple different reasons. Um, I've seen it done on the kick panel there. Uh, you can put it in a lot of spots. You know, this looks fairly good. And when you're in the driver's position, you can reach that when you're harnessed in. Also, if you were in the car, and something bad happened, somebody could walk up to the car from the window and reach and activate that button as well. It's out of reach of the passenger because we all know that that temptation is there to push that button. And you definitely don't want that to happen. And then the last nozzle, the fifth nozzle, lives down here in the footwell. So we do have one zone for the driver if the fire suppression is actually needed for you know the worst case scenario you know we're using these to mostly protect your three hundred thousand dollar plus investment from burning down but we also want to keep in mind that these fire suppressions are also designed to get you out of the vehicle if it's on fire make sure you don't get harmed so so we put one down here low now the novex suppressant does not harm fabrics, leathers, electronics. So having it down low here, it kind of keeps it away from that, but it's not spraying anything directly on there. So if we do have to activate the system, there will be, you know, just a little bit that comes in here, but better safe than sorry. All right, guys, from underneath the car, what we're looking at right here is the back side of that bulkhead pass-through push lock fitting that was in the frunk. So it just kind of goes up over the axle there and eventually comes around here we got a, just a few zip ties holding it in place and it's just passing through the main tunnel and it comes back around here and then the kit comes with some of this protective heat sleeve because we're running that up into the engine bay at that point so just kind of passes up through and disappears and we'll show you where it was connected in the engine bay. Working our way around to the back, we decided to put two of the nozzles on either side of where the fuel injectors would live under the intake plenum. So it was easier to not make a bracket for these two and just put two small 916 holes for the nozzles down in the carbon. And when you're looking up from the top, I think it you know looks pretty classy. It, you know, it doesn't look completely out of place. And then in the rear, we made two brackets for these nozzles that are directed at the turbochargers. You can kind of see that one there, that one there. So we've got four zones in the rear and the way this is ran 
is with that same hose. It's linked behind the panels and ran to this uh, joint session here. It passes through the rear bulkhead there. And then you can see how the connection's made on this side. It's all push lock fitting, so if you ever need to remove these panels, you can either uh, disconnect the push lock there or unscrew the fitting there. Few moments later. All right, guys, we got the install buttoned up in the frunk. This is where the bottle ends up living, so it gives you the majority of your trunk space in the front you're not really giving up a whole lot plus most people are going to have a water box right there we just have it out to show you what this looks like uh, the control box is right here uh, everything passes through a nice grommet in here the bottle is bolted to the bottom of the trunk so it is removable everything's wired up these are the three different test procedures that you can check on your system so the first thing you want to do is the battery check to make sure that you have battery in here with the nine volt battery. So you just flip that into the down position. You see the amber LED, that means that the battery is good to go. And then when you wanna arm the system, you flick it in the upward position red. Red means it's armed. So you might wanna wonder, okay, so how do I test the system to make sure that it's gonna trigger? You need to have it in the middle position or technically the off position, and then you can press the button on the inside and the green LED will light up. So you can see there, if the system was in the armed position, the green button is gonna trigger the system. So that's how you can know that everything's going to work when you need it to. So that's how you do it. It's recommended if you're gonna park your car for a long time to leave this in the neutral position and unplug the battery pack from the system just so you don't have a drain on it and it'll last quite a bit longer. Guys, a little bit of a wardrobe change. We're into the next day. Didn't get to film everything same day, but check out our new merch, the new uh, Collab Stealth shirt. Have it on our website. Same with the fire suppression system. So this is, is gonna be offered as a complete turnkey solution. There is professional install recommended. It takes about eight hours to install the system completely, but we're gonna provide all the lines, the wiring that's terminated with the connectors, the brackets to mount it onto the car, and you'll be able to reference this video to get it installed. So hope you enjoyed that video. And as always, we'll see you on the next one.